Welcome to k -Spec Watches, my name is Tim and in this episode I have the pleasure to show you two brand new watches from Vario and both models have something special, something beyond the normal generic watch and so let's check them out. And the first watch I want to show you here is a field watch and this is the 1945 D12, a so-called Dirty Dozen watch. And we had one of these watches in the, one of the last episodes and um, so I keep the explanation a bit short. What is the Dirty Dozen? It's not the movie. I think there is a movie out there with the title. No, we are in during World War II on the British side and the British government decided to yeah, give some spec sheets to Swiss manufacturers for a field watch for their troops. And so this is a bit, a bit more a genre of watches than a single model. It's a bit like the Type 20, the Type 21, so a lot of manufacturers, one spec sheet that allowed variations, small variations. And it happened to be that there were 12 companies involved and therefore the name Dirty Dozen Watch and therefore our name here 1945 Dirty Dozen or D12 Watch. And I said these specs allow a bit of variation and same scenario today. You can produce reissues following one particular model and you can just basically you can copy it with modern materials. And some manufacturers do that and I like this approach because then you have the real deal in your hand. And the other method is that you add something from your own region, from your own ideas, from your own design. And this is what we have here with that Vario that they added a bit, let's say, Asian influences to that watch, which is better known for World War II on, in the European theater, but Vario says with some right we were a part of this time, we had our war theatres in our region in Asia and so you find there's some very special elements and I also respect this, um, yeah, this approach. And the second watch is very different, I mean field watch, they're every minute and every second counts, but with the next watch, the Vario Navi, single hand watch, let's say 15 minutes are important or 30 minutes or an hour, because this concept was invented, not by Vario, but was invented to basically calm you down. And the, the, the main function here or the main layout is that you see the entire day on the dial. You see all 24 hours. And you could argue now, well, I can see 24 hours also with a GMT watch with a 24 hour scale there. But this is not the idea because a GMT watch is a fairly complicated thing. And on the contrary here is our Navi single hand. Very simple, day in front of you. And of course the main objection might be, well, it's very different, uh, very difficult to see then times like 2 hours and 37 minutes. But again, that's the idea for this watch that you see time um, a bit more relaxed. And if you like this or not, depends a bit on your taste, your character, your life circumstances, I think. But I'm very happy that they did it, that they present us something so special and so rare. I think the most famous one comes from the company Meistersinger and it's not really a staple in the watch world and so I'm very happy that I can present you that watch as well. Okay, and here we are with the Vario 1945 D12 field watch and we begin as always with the specifications. We have here a case diameter of 37 millimeters, length lock to lock is 45, the height is 10.5 millimeters and the lock width here is 18. Then we have a flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, a screw down crown and the watch here is waterproof up to 100 meters. And inside we find the automatic movement Miota 82S5 with a beat rate of 21,600 and this thing offers then a power reserve of 40 hours. And the price for this watch here is 368 US dollars, so in euros a bit less, 350, but then you have to add your 19 to 21 percent VAT. So let's begin with the dial. You see here the typical numerals we know from many other brands, from many other models in this genre of watch. So loom numerals, large syringe type of hands with a lot of loom again. Here you have a loom shot and you see this really works. Then you have the characteristic minute track for extra precision and you have a triangle on position 12 and the small seconds here as a reference to old pocket watch technology. And you have a bit of a grainy texture on the dial if you look closely then you see 
there is something grainy on it and this is not um, yeah this is not a gimmick this reduces reflection so that the thing is extra legible I mean like this you s barely can see the crystal here right and so this is because this this texture swallows light and reduces reflection so very very nice feature and the next aspect is of course that you have only very little um, wording on it in this case zero you have the logo behind the hands I will show you this in a second but it comes with very very little marketing on the dial which I find beautiful I really like this I like it with Flieger watches from Stova or Laco and I like it with these dirty dozen watches and so this is the the look the design of the watch now let's go over the case the case itself is not super special mixture of brushing and high polished bezel you have drilled lug holes also make total sense and of course you have the crown on position four which might be a bit divisive but again I can understand why people say we will make this our own watch and not only a generic copy here and historic it makes sense because I, I personally see this as a reference to Seiko and so the Asia Pacific region and in fact you find on the case back another clue another hint that here we are not on the beaches of Normandy here we are in Singapore there you have a soldier with a flag and this as a commemoration don't know if this is the correct word as a yeah, hint to the region the watch comes from right and I really like this that they opted for something from their own region here to create this case back and it definitely looks different it stands out I really really like that and the Singapore you also have on the case back here sapphire crystal 100 meter water resistance and yeah some information here um, they sent me this watch together with a bunch of straps leather and and nylon and other type of straps but I really like this look here together with this textile strap not sure about the rivets here to be honest I would would prefer to wear this without rivets but of course it's sturdy and nice but I um, spotted a little little problem here the lugs are short and so the strap is in contact with the case and you have here a, an edge so I'm pretty sure that this edge could damage the strap sorry it's an idiotic uh, sentence I'm pretty sure that it could damage and um, so the conclusion is I'm not sure but I could imagine that this um, will damage the strap over time so here's a bit yeah I think half a millimeter more for these lugs would would have been a nice option but okay everything else works just fine screw down crown winding action this Miyota you can wind feels a bit old Salita style scratch 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 <laughs> and then with position one you can set the time doesn't feel super luxurious and this typical rattling rattling impression here this is a bit of resistance very typical for these Miyota movements I don't know why but this works fine as you can see it's possible to set the time very precise here and so yep bit of play not as much as I had with the last field watch here so absolutely okay winding action is also okay or screwing action I should say but this sounds very weird all right let's put it on the wrist now and there you go there you go there it is 37 millimeters 17 centimeter wrist not sure about the rivets um, but I can live with it but I think it's a, it's a nice combo especially when you imagine this really in a, on a hot summer day you're sweating and stuff and so I think this could be really it and again I like the position of the crown because it's very comfortable very comfortable on the wrist yeah there you go And there we are as a premiere on Casebag watches this first the first single-handed watch in review but let's start as always with the specification so that you know all the measurements and the features and the components here so we have a case diameter here of 38 millimeters lug to lug length of 46 and a height of 11 
millimeters and the lug width here is 20. The watch is equipped with a sapphire crystal, normal crown, so not screw down. And inside we find the automatic movement Miota 82S5. It provides hand winding, is hackable and it offers a power reserve of 40 hours, so pretty contemporary stuff. And this watch is waterproof up to 100 meters, comes on a leather strap, more of that later, it's another strap than this one. And the price here is indicated with 420 428 US dollars or 390 and you can choose between a set between some dial colors but I really enjoyed this suave beige here this beige this or sand or, or eggshell I don't know how to call it exactly but I really like it together with um, yeah with with darker straps and they delivered some straps with this watch as said um, but I put this on the case bag number one because I have the feeling that this really suits the watch and suits this beige. Gives a bit of pure luxurious contrast. And so now you can study the dial in detail. And my question during that watch of the week episode was, does it look cheap in any form or way? You can see these waves now. And I had a bit of a problem that I found them a bit tacky on images. But um, here they are very subtle as you can see. And also the font is very nice and the coinage better. So all these elements on the product images are, in my humble opinion, convincing in real life. Definitely. Definitely. And now there is not so much more to explain. The day starts at position 12 here. And then now it's 12 and 15 minutes. That's all you, know, you have to know. And this little compass here is more an indicator that the watch is running. These are the seconds, of course, but you really can use it as an indicator if the watch is running or not. And now you have this crown here, also very interesting. Uh, let's stay a bit, a bit with the case here. You see brushed sides, this distinctive crown, drilled lug holes, and you see there is a bit material taken away from the lugs, so that it looks a bit more elegant. Brushed sides case back there's a nice compass on it there you go there's a nice compass and this is well made I must say this is really well made you don't have sharp edges you don't have any form of sloppy work this is all good there really really all good and now my explanation could stop because these are the elements of the watch there's not not more to discover here this watch should calm you down and I think it definitely does and operating is pretty fast forward position one and now it's very unusual normally we wind this crown and we are used to the minute hand that goes pretty quickly uh, around the dial here everything's very very slow you can wind it an entire round and the hand the single hand moves only a tiny bit so this is pretty pretty relaxed and now you have for example four o'clock and this is four o'clock and three go into focus please four and thirty and this is four and thirty one but who needs four and thirty one so this is the method here this is the idea how to use that watch all right and now let's put it on the wrist and there it is 38 millimeters 17 centimeter wrist there you see the case, the case, the, the case form. It's a bit boxy, but mildened by this nice coin edge bezel. By the way, I, one time I've read the reason for coin edge bezel, but I'd completely forgotten it. Does anybody know th still the explanation or or the reason why they implemented the first time these coin edge bezels on the watch? I'd really like to hear or to read that. Please let us know in the comments in case you know that. All right, let's go back now.
Welcome back. I hope you found this enjoyable. I know it's a longer video than usual, but I found it so, so nice to pair these watches because they're both special, they're both interesting, come from one manufacturer from one region, and they demonstrate that even smaller brands can yeah, go into risk, can present something really special, risky, which I really appreciate. And I also appreciate your attention through these minutes here. So thank you very much and until next time.